What's up guys? The uh, Miata is still doing good so far, so that's a plus. And today, since we are coronavirus socially distancing ourselves, luckily I have some car parts to install. We're gonna do the uh, gauge faces from revlimiter.net. Uh, I got the uh, Warbird ones, and I had them slightly customized to where the tack is red and the, um, the hash marks on the speedometer are red. Um, Oh yeah, I've already taken some video of that, so I will overlay that with me talking here. So I'm going to install them today, and I'm going to pull off... They look pretty simple. I've already done ones on an NA Miata. You just pull off the little surround that goes behind the uh, steering wheel, like the little like steering column cover, I guess. Um, pull off the gauge hood, and then uh, take the screws out that hold the gauges in. Disconnect the clips, and then... Pull the gauges apart and swap the faces out. Shouldn't be too terribly difficult. Uh, I'm gonna get started now and we'll see how it goes. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna wanna do is take out these three screws. There's one, two, three. All of them are Phillips head, or actually they're probably JIS screws, but whatever, Phillips head's gonna work. Okay, the uh, two that go in the two holes in the front are these same pointy coarse thread screws that are effectively everywhere in the interior and the uh, one that's in the back hole by itself is this kind of fine thread machine screw so definitely keep those sorted though I think it'll be fairly obvious if you put the wrong one in the wrong place okay. with the screws out this top piece which is where my aftermarket stereo microphone is mounted will just pop off there's some clips so you might have to give it a tug, but I'm just going to lay mine over here to the side, kind of out of the way. Good enough. Okay. Now we got to take this hood off. Okay. I broke this loose by pulling around here. Giving it a sharp tug works the best, but it's just clips holding it in. There's no screws or anything. So you can really, once you get it popped out, you can just do that. comes right off. Now you've just got... One, two, three, thank you, Ava. Four screws. There's the upper ones. They're kind of hard to see in the other shot. Just take those out and the whole cluster comes out. On the back, there's a... Are you helping, Ava? Okay. You're just good at counting? Okay, well, thank you for your counting help. There's some clips on the back that plug in, that everything plugs into. That's gonna be about it, and then the cluster comes out. Okay, there are the three plugs I was talking about. And here is the gauges. So you're just gonna take this inside, preferably somewhere reasonably clean. Now would be a really good time to uh, use some glass cleaner on this plastic uh, gauge lens. Get it all nice and cleaned up because you're never going to have the access that you have now. Obviously, on the back, all the screw-in type things like these units are the bulbs. And these are where the connectors go. You're obviously going to want to be pretty careful with these units because this is a printed circuit board. So try to not short that out. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to take these in. Okay, hopefully this is correct. This is the corner indicator thing. Getting the bulb out and moving this is super easy. Getting them under the old one is super difficult and annoying, but uh, hopefully this works out. I think it looks good. What did he say? Okay, we'll see. Okay, got the very annoying uh, relocation wiring done on the back, I believe. We'll see if it actually works. Then I got the two bezels off the front, and now I'm gonna swap out the gauges. You're pretty much, for all of them, just gonna pry the needles off and then take these little screws out. Uh, you're gonna wanna wear gloves, I'm not yet though. Um, basically, take the needles off, take the little screws out, pop the new one on, um, and then we'll go plug everything in and put the needles where they're supposed to be, and then we'll pop the bezels back on. You'll see, it'll be easy. Okay, get all my needles off without destroying anything. So that's always a plus. Let's see. I'm gonna go ahead and start taking gauges off. Okay, all gauge faces are out, all needles are out. I'm gonna remove these. 
these to make the lighting even, and then I'm gonna start putting stuff back together. Okay, I've got most of this stuff done. Got my lighting made to where it's gonna be even, and I'm gonna start putting my gauges back in. Okay, one down, four to go. Okay, I have everything back together. I'm basically done, except for setting the needles, obviously. But yeah, I think those look pretty cool. Okay, this is my first test run. You can just uh, install the very top middle connector, the one that goes like right here in the back, and flick the lights on and see what's working and what's not. In this case, it looks like half my tack is not lit up and half my speedometer is not lit up. So I'm gonna go flop a couple bulbs around and see what happens. There we go. Now everything is actually lit up, so that's better. Um, I'm gonna crank the car, let it warm up, set the other needles, and then uh, start to button stuff up. Okay, we are basically all done. Got all the uh, trim pieces back on and everything. All of my gauges work. So that's pretty cool. I used uh, um, an OBD2 Bluetooth connector and Torque Pro on my Android work phone, a Pixel 3 to uh, set the RPM, because it shows you like real-time information RPM. So just match that. Did the same with the water temperature. Uh, the fuel I just stuck back to roughly where it was. Uh, the better way to do it really is to go to the gas station and fill up, but I didn't feel like screwing with that. And I pretty much just set my trip meter and fill up at about 200 miles anyway. So it doesn't really matter if it's very slightly off. No, no. And honestly, the factory gauge is very slightly off, so who cares? I did, uh, right as I was about to put everything together, notice that my high beam indicator, as well as my um, check engine light, no longer work. That's the ones that I relocated using the honestly pain in the ass little wiring harness trick in the back. Um, I was sitting there, like, about to put it back together. I realized that... Uh, they were not working and I decided, screw it, for now at least. The check engine light, I don't care anything about. Um, I'm about to go with a mega squirt, so the check engine light's no longer gonna work. And because I did an EGR delete, um, it already was just on all the time, which, you know, on all the time basically doesn't give me any useful information. Um, so I just kind of said, screw it for now. I'm just gonna drive it and enjoy the check engine light not being on and, uh, here pretty shortly, hell especially if uh, we're doing social isolation for more weeks. But here pretty shortly, I will uh, maybe fix the uh, high beam indicator. That's probably a decent idea. Aside from that though, everything looks pretty dang good. Uh, there's one little spot around the five that I don't know what's going on there. It looks like the light's not getting through for some reason. So probably when I check the uh, check engine light or the sorry the high beam indicator probably when I got to fix that I'll see what's going on there but uh, aside from that everything looks pretty damn good and I'm impressed with them this is the uh, lights off version kind of crappy lighting here and I'm using like the little GoPro light mod so I need to take better video like outside in the daytime with the top down but it's been raining for the last 87 days so what else but yeah overall pretty easy install and everything looks pretty good to me so uh i will uh find some other stuff to do soon i guess all right have fun